All right, good morning. Uh, back to Mike being online. I went to sleep and didn't wake up as uh, early as I thought I might do. Um, what we got? Quick check-in on the money raised so far. So we're up to £4,360, which is cool. Absolutely awesome. Um, <clears throat> we have Jenny Radcliffe and Stu Hurst up next. So hi, guys. Good morning. Morning. Morning, how are we doing? We're doing all right, a little bit tired, um, despite having actually had three hours more sleep than I said I'd have. Um, but yeah, doing all right. Um, welcome to BeerCon 1, uh, welcome to Sunday morning. Uh, would you like to just give us a little bit of an intro as to who you both are? Well, we'll start with yourself, Jenny. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm Jen. I'm a I'm social engineer, I produce a couple of podcasts in the community and do some talks and stuff. It's Sunday morning. What do you want to say? <laughs> well, pretty much what you're saying. Hi, I'm Stu. Um, I'm as tired as Jenny sounds. Um, so my day job is head of cloud security at Just Eat. And I do some community stuff as well up in Scotland and, and some meetups and things. Cool. Awesome. All right. So Jenny, can we start with you? Give us a little bit of a flavor for some of the work that you do, uh, the kind of things that you get involved in. Yeah, I mean, I guess a lot of the time, uh really I'm a, I'm a physical penetration specialist which for this time of the morning is always uh you know some of the people smile at but social engineering and the psychological side really has been specialties and i've done it for ever i feel really old now especially in the many hats meetups and things that i see the guys i, I feel ancient but yeah mostly um so not a technical hacker but uh unless you see the brain as a technical tool and if, it, and if you do, then that's what I would do. And yeah, and a lot of kind of just breaking into buildings and stuff. I guess I've been doing that um, before I really even would have labelled it anything to do with cyber or hacking or social engineering. Just always done it, really. Fall off a lot of roofs and things. And then, of course, within the community, uh, put B-sides, the full first B-sides on this year. Got another one coming next year. And I, I do, I do some podcasts and things and try and interview people with stories because the community is full of people with great stories. So I like to put them on and, and talk about them as well. So you run a podcast and you think you do videos and things like that. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I have the Human Factor podcast. And I mean, a lot of people, uh, you know, what I'm always surprised and overwhelmed by is the generosity of people. It's like this. You know, you ask people to come on and they come on and they just, uh, open up and, and talk about what they do and what they're passionate about and we get you know a lot of engagement from the community because I think we try and not focus on the product side or anything but just on what you know why people do it what they love you know and, and, and I'm always surprised and, and delighted about the generosity of people who give their time to come and talk about these things I see so many podcasts now and uh, I guess it's just it's just that we all want to share within the community. People want to share about it and talk about it and get people, get people in to the community. Hmm. Um, as we've done, we've done little events like Stu does in Scotland. You know, we've done little events in Liverpool just to try and shine a light now on the good side of what we do and to show people how, um, you know, how passionate we all are about what we do. And it, it's, it's, yeah, so it's, it's quite a ride. It's, it's a busy uh, job, but I, I love it. So. so you put on, you mentioned B-Sides Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, and myself and Ian and, and the beer farmers generally were uh, happily guests of that particular conference uh, yeah. back in the summertime. Um, give us a little bit of an insight into how that went and, and what it was like to actually put on your inaugural local conference. Well, I want first of all, just a big, big shout out to Matt to Data Drive here because obviously he's doing the technical side of this uh, for this conference and he came and he helped out Cooper and everything at Liverpool as well. So yeah. big high five to Matt. But well, it was just, we felt like we needed something in Liverpool. You know, we there's lots of great B-sides in and around. Uh, you know, obviously Manchester's been going for a couple of years and everything, it's not too far. But we just feel like Liverpool's such a good city to do it in. And um, we obviously, we like a party. We've got the venues. And it was chaotic. You know, me and I think you've got Stu on later, Stu Coulson. Yeah. Uh, and Brian uh, and Brian Campbell and Rich, Rich Devere helped. And, oh, God, it seems like such a good idea over a few years to do it. 
Yeah. And then it's a lot of work, you know, it's so much work to get it to run smoothly. But Liverpool's a city that likes party and we like to welcome people. And, you know, we were overwhelmed really by the success of it, by the heat. It was a hot, we, we actually had it in the Maritime Museum in Liverpool on the Albert Dock on a day that was one of the hottest days. I think it was the hottest day of this year and one of the hottest days ever. And it was sweltering hot and, you know, but we wanted to hold it in an iconic building. So we wanted to hold it on the dock somewhere where people could easily find. And I suppose one of the best things about it was the directions I gave onto us on the day was, if you just go towards the great big green birds on top of a building, you'll see us, which was quite <laughs> cool. You know, like, how do we get there? Just find the live bird, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was kind of, we had some great speakers. It was, a, it was just such a lovely coming together of everyone and everything that we wanted in the community. And we're hoping to do it again next year. Um, trying to find a date is the problem because there's quite a lot of events now. We don't want to clash with anything because we want to go to them. So we were thinking of one date and it, and it was going to clash with SteelCon. I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we all want to go to SteelCon. Yeah. So we're still nailing a date, but um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, Liverpool is just one of those cities. I think we were really lucky with some of the speakers because Liverpool's one of the cities people want to visit, you know, for other reasons. Mm. Um, and yeah, we had, a, you know, let's say we had the beer farms on our Dean speak here. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was a brilliant day and we're going to keep doing it. So I think this, I mean, I can exclusively reveal, if you like, ooh, ooh. Um, that for the 2021, we're going to focus on the social engineering, the physical, the OPSEC side, um, as well as obviously all the usual things that we have for the B side. And try and do some classes and things on things like sweeping rooms and self defense and breaking surveillance and those types of things. So it should be quite a spooky of inverted commas uh, B sides next year. Sounds excellent. Sounds fantastic. And we had a good time. I mean, I, I've got an affinity for Liverpool anyway from my time in the music industry. So it's, uh, which I've made no secret of, but mm -hmm. to actually rock up in Liverpool on an infosec engagement, as it were, was, uh, was extra special. So yeah, look forward to, uh, to yeah. coming along and uh, getting involved next year. They're brilliant. Um, Stuart. So you're, Stuart. Oh yeah, Stuart. I know my parents that call me that. It's your Sunday name and it is Sunday. <laughs> so uh, you're a stranger to putting events on. You've done quite a few. I think we, the Bear Farm has also graced one of your events in September time. Yeah. Um, give us a bit of your background. Give us a, a flavour for your kind of day of the week. Yeah, so obviously day job with Just Eat, which is um, dealing with cloud security stuff, which I've sort of morphed into over the last couple of years um, and still don't know a huge amount about, I guess. Um, and it's just really interesting and I love the company and I'm, I'm having a really good time. Um, the community stuff's really interesting and I love speaking to people who are all you know involved in all these facets of the community stuff because we, we do our little thing in Scotland and everyone's on a pretty similar journey, I think, where... In, you, know, you just start a thing or you do a thing and then it, it grows these legs and, and you never quite get it right and it, it morphs into something you just didn't really expect it to be and I suppose I know no different started to meet up four four or five years ago whenever it was um and then it, it just it kind of grew legs and become became quite popular um I now run a, a project with uh, Harry McLaren up in up here in Scotland called um, Cyber Scotland Connect and they had, we, we were two people who ran meetups and we just saw lots of kind of issues in Scotland of people doing amazing things and individually driving lots of cool stuff, but things were clashing. It was hard to get speakers, uh, hard to get venues, sponsorship. And we, we sort of came together and thought, why don't we just build something that's almost like a conduit between all these groups of people. So now we have um, a whole stack of moderators who, who fulfill different roles within um, what we're doing um, and, and they help with all manner of things. So we get involved in, in a whole raft of things in Scotland, um, not because we're trying to, you know, influence any of those kind of things, but just because it is a small enough community where we all know each other and can all help each other, yet we're all doing separate stuff. So you've got OWASP and uh, the thing that we do and, um, and ISAC and lots of other organizations. And it's been really, really valuable. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of it, actually. We're a year in, uh, it, there isn't a strategy. There isn't a longer term plan. We're just trying to do some helpful things. Yeah. Cool. And a bloody fine job you do as well. Just give us an idea, because we see um, on social media and all that kind of stuff that there could be some challenges around putting events on, it's fair to say. And I think where I'm going with this is that you're never going to please everybody. 
and you're always going to have people that, that find that it's not for them or that their their thing as it were has been overlooked or neglected yeah um what i guess this is to the pair of you really is what your experiences of that and how do you, how have you kind of overcome some of those challenges in terms of making these events as inclusive as you can yeah I, I, I'll, I'll just chip in before Jenny um, chips yeah, in. So sure. again, when we started the meetup in Scotland, um, and then the Cyber Scotland Connect thing, it you know it's born out of some ideas to to help people be part of a community and 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 talk about things. And then as it does get bigger, you do have to think about things that you didn't think about before. So things like code of conduct and um, you know as you become a bit more of a formal thing, you, you have to adapt to, to those things. So and we've been on a bit of a learning curve with that, as any anybody has. Scotland's an interesting place because, unfortunately, it's not the most diverse of populations compared to other parts of either the UK or, or beyond, um, and which we're all trying to make that better. Um, I suppose the only thing that I, I would add is we're trying to do what we think is the right thing with a whole selection of people who, who, can, who can help, and we don't always get it right. Um, we're not trying to overthink it too much. Uh, you know, the, the events that we run up in Scotland are, are awesome. We don't get any particularly dissenting voices, which is great. And, and we're trying to look for diverse speakers and, and crowds. Um, but it's certainly a, a journey. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Jenny, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I'd agree that we, we uh, certainly for Liverpool, it was, you know, we had such a small team and we were doing everything and we were trying to do so much of it right. Uh, but then what, you know, what's right in terms of, the actual event and when people you know we had speakers you know pull out and we were sort of pulling things together and then on the day there's just so many moving parts to try and look after so there were people there you know who needed extra help in terms of um physical capabilities around the venue there were people who were uh you know sort of really overwhelmed by the fact because it's, it, it was a really kind of it was a really fun event but it was very loud and very chaotic you know, and, and, and people were there to have a really good time as well, sort of really enjoyed the talks and everything. And so there's a lot of moving parts. And I think the thing that we're, we've sort of really blown our mind for next year is you wanted to kind of be informal and loose because it was the B-sides, but at the same time, you've got to keep putting in, you've got to keep revising, um, you know, the way things are running, the way people are behaving. You know, we had a great team in terms of, we had, we had a, the goon squad, um, I wanted to be called that, by the way. Um, I mean, you did say you can call yourself whatever you like. Then we're, we're fine with Gucci. We want to think about other things, and it was just pulling everyone together and happy. So, I, I mean, I think the thing that overwhelmed me was the will of everyone who was there to make it work and the support that we got. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the enthusiasm of it. And you know, on the day, it's a full day event. You know, I was there from sort of half seven in the morning. We'd all been off the night before, but we were there from very early. Um, and it's the enthusiasm of it that's going, but there's just so many moving parts to an event. Um, and that's what I'd say, if people are starting to put B-sides together. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things is you want to grow it, you know, you want it to be huge. Like I was thinking, oh, you know, next year we'll do two days or three days. Or, and, and, it, and a couple of people in the business who've done lots of them, and um, so people from B-sides London, we had a lot of kind of big brothers and sisters from over the world who I spoke to about B-sides events before Liverpool. Um, giving me advice. One of the pieces of advice they gave was don't be too keen to grow it too quickly. You know, get that one day as tight as you can and as right as you can, because it, it seems counterintuitive. But the more kind of time you put into controlling what happens, the more loose people can actually be. And so we've kind of learned from that a little bit and said, you know, we're going to keep it to a day. Obviously, we'll be there the afternoon before and doing a few things, but we're going to keep it to a day and just really watch out for those moving parts this time, because you get so caught up in, in the minutiae in the day that it's quite difficult sometimes to stay focused on, you know, some of the bigger things. So that's really what we're looking at this year. It's learning as you go, as you said. Um, but, you know, it, it's more, you're overwhelmed by support in this community for things like this. Yeah. You know, no, not, ju not just in terms of people donating and supporting us and sponsoring and everything, but just goodwill, you know, just people just saying, you know, really hope you have a good one. You know, don't worry, you know, we're with you. I mean, it's, 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 that's something about this community that I, you know, I've worked in and still do work in a lot of different sectors and clients and stuff. But it's something that it overwhelms me sometimes in the community, the way people will chip in and support people. Um, yeah. 
No, I, I, yeah, sorry. I, I, it's funny, on my whiteboard behind me, I've just got in massive letters positive, which is what I was going to try and get across in, in chatting this morning. And it, like, you know, you, you get the odd kind of um, dissenting voice either on Twitter or, or something will happen at an event that, that um, is unavoidable or whatever it might be. But yeah, I totally agree, Jenny. It's, it's just things like this and just the way that everybody gives back to a community, I think it is phenomenal. I can't, I can't really think of too many industries that this amount of people commit their own time um for for not a huge amount of reward because we you know this is our, our personal time we're doing a lot of these things in so it's not to get the small violins out but but that is fundamentally what we all do and what we all contribute to because we care about it so much i think you're right and i think speaking from the point of view as somebody who's been a punter at a conference or 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 10 um and also been a speaker at a number of conferences particularly this year you become invested in it you know, even though you're not part of the organising committee or, or you're an organiser on the day, you, you invest in it. So you invest in it by turning up at it or you invest in it by preparing a talk for it or, or any of those kinds of things. And I think when it comes to the day of the event, you just kind of, along with everybody else, you're willing it to succeed. No, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I speak, I mean, more than half the time I'm speaking now at all sorts of conferences all over the place. And so... You know, you're kind of under the impression, oh, I've done this. You know, this is not my first rodeo. I mean, this year I've probably done, I think I think it's about 65 events this year, one thing wow. or another, as a speaker. Um, and so you think, oh, I've got this. You know, what could possibly happen that I don't know? But if it's your event, and also we run it on a shoestring. You know, the minute that we have enough sponsorship money, we can the sponsorship. Mm. You know, we don't want to make any money from it. We want to just offer you know, um, try try and offer some um, sort of hardship tickets or tickets for students or lower price things. We want to try and make it as accessible as possible for as many types of people as possible. But we didn't want to make any money. And then what you find is that it's, it's so different from corporate events and things I speak at, where there's just so much money that, that like you can almost, uh, you know, I learned a long time ago in corporate that there's a lot of problems if you've got the resources that you just solve it. You know, if you can throw money and resources and time at problems and teams, they go away. But if you've decided that you're not going to make any money, the whole thing's in the spirit of the community, um, then you've got to be creative and think of creative solutions to get over things. Uh, and, and I think you, know, you couldn't be in a better community for getting people to think outside the box and be creative, you know? And so we sort of send flags up on various things and you know, people always respond. So yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm coming to the end of the year, I'm just feeling a lot of love for the, the community, despite everything that goes on. You know, I think we forget sometimes that, you know, we're quite tight knit. I mean, I did a talk a while ago and I was talking about the numbers of people in the infosec industry in the UK. And the figure that was sort of coming out was only around about 300,000. Yeah. Right. And so you think about that and that's, actually that's not that many people. It's no wonder that we all know each other. And it feels like a family with everything that that implies, you know, with, with the, the kind of, and I'm going to say this now and probably shouldn't, but like, you've got like the pissed uncle and auntie over in one corner that cause trouble at every event. You've got the, you know, uh, the people who, it, it's, it's like being in a pub. Someone says to me, this is what Twitter's like, Infosector is, it's like being in a pub with everyone. Yeah. And then most people can't find and then there's side conversations and then now and again, there's like a squabble or whatever. And it feels like that sometimes, you know? Like a family wedding kind of thing, right? It's like a family <laughs> wedding, but that goes on 24-7 across the globe with all of us involved in the opinions. And, uh, and and I just, but, you know, but for the most part, family weddings are fun, right? And yeah. so that's that's really where I came from with it. And then um, just can't wait to get it all going again. And like, you know, I've been to Stu's events in Scotland and it's the same in Scotland. It's the same in Leeds. It's the same for all the B-side events. Um, and it's the same just for the community. We, we, we get on with it. And most people have got the best intentions most of the time. Yeah. And as I say, if we need to create a problem solver. And I mean, if you look at you guys today, when I saw that the, uh, the Google thing went down for Discord, you know, and there was a little bit of shit, you know, this has gone down for, for Beacon 1. Yeah. I had no worry at all that you guys would get up and running and come up with a plan B. And a massive respect for you to do it the way you did. Because, because you know, we, we, we make things happen. Yeah, so yeah, I think you're right, and and, and people pull together. It's it's, I would call it the British spirit, but it's not about that. It's about everybody that that's we're all ultimately on the same team, and it's things like Bacon One, things like um, B sides and Cyber Scotland Connect, where you see it manifest, where people actually do pull together because they care, they give a shit, mm. um, and everybody wants 
goes back to my point about investment. Everybody wants a really good outcome for things like this. Um, and, and that's clear. And I think the other thing it, it demonstrates is never underestimate the amount of effort that goes in behind the scenes in making these events a success. Mm. You know, and having not really bake on one because we kind of threw it together on the back of a fag packet, but certainly like um, when you've got to get a venue and you've got to get catering and you've got to get people in and all this kind of stuff, it's not an easy thing to, to do. And having seen the wiring under the board of that on a number of occasions now, it's something that I, I am on behalf of the industry generally really appreciate. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your time. Um, and thank you for your efforts. And that flew by really quickly. <laughs> but yeah, Stu, Jenny, awesome to have you on. Thank um, you for having us. Thanks yeah. for having us. And thanks for putting this on. And, and again, just to say to everyone, you know, I wanted to do a Bob Geldof moment. <laughs> and just go and swear. Can I swear? Yes, you can absolutely. Because you, you know, I, I like swearing a lot. And I, you know, you want to go give us your fucking money, people. Are, you know, this is for charity. You don't be going off and and listening to it and going, oh, this is great. Twenty four hours and not contribute. Contribute something. There are people matching donations there. And just from someone who does the podcast, I do the podcast. We have at least one a week. And I'm telling you that interviewing people, getting the right questions. Uh, managing it all is, is bloody difficult so massive respect to you and, and if you listen to this and enjoying any of the speakers and there's been brilliant people on and brilliant people to come you know just think about just clicking on that link and doing a bit of a donation because people aren't doing it for for nothing they're doing it for charity so let's do it see yeah, yeah. bob gouts off moment there we go <laughs> well done jenny <laughs> i didn't swear but i was like give us your fucking money <laughs> And he actually never said that, by no, the way. No, I was going to say that. That's, oh, uh, it's an urban you myth. See, and there we go. There <laughs> we go. I yeah. knew that if you say anything, someone will pick you up on it. <laughs> there you go. It wouldn't be an Intercept conference otherwise, <laughs> exactly. would it? Really? It'll be trending on Twitter within the next 10 minutes. I'm sure. Oh, damn it. <laughs> okay, Jenny, Stu, thank you ever so much. Uh, yeah, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, it'd be great to, if you were sticking around and listening in to what else we've got. Um, but yeah, thanks for your time. Really much appreciated. Thanks, well done, thanks guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.